<laughs> hey people, what's going on? It's Jamil. And yesterday I had like this amazing scenario that happened. Okay, there's this girl I've been talking to. And she was telling me, she was like, before I go any further with you, she was like, I need proof that you don't have anything. Like you don't have any type of uh, trans <laughs> STD, sexually transmitted disease. And I was like, I don't. But she was like, she was like, even if you use a condom, I still have to, oh, I still want to see something on paperwork before you get into my bed, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm like, all right. So I go, so I go, instead of, instead of going down to the, um, the health clinic or whatever, I, I just went to, I just went straight to the hospital. I'm just like, I'm, let's hurry up and do it. I went to, you know how they stick that little fucking thing in, in your penis and all that stuff? And I do all that stuff. So I go, I go down there. And as soon as I get to the fucking hospital, I walk up there to the, to the front thing. They have a woman working there. The woman fits the same exact description of like women, like she, she just, just everything about the scenario. Like, like she, she. She, they're like, she was there. They put her there just for me. And as soon as I walk in, I just, I just start hitting it with the program. I'm just like, I just start tearing. You know, I let them know I'm the only person in the world that, you know, no one ever did it like I did it. Jamil Ross, the only person who ever did it and got away with it. J A M E L. I had to spell my name out for her. You know, I say two E's because you're going to get a double dose. <laughs> two E's because you're going to get a double dose. And I was sitting there talking to her. I'm like, yeah, you're too, you know, you're too beautiful. You work at a hospital. Uh, and she starts laughing and stuff. I go straight to the waiting room. Then they had a girl in there with some see-through yoga pants, tall, blonde hair, fine as a motherfucker with some see-through yoga pants and a thong on. And she's bending over right in front of me with a thong on. And I'm just, I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just like, damn. I'm just, I don't know whether to pull out my damn camera phone or, or start talking. And so I'm sitting there, I'm just like, I'm just like, oh. Uh, you know, as fine as you are, they might as well just give you a pop, you know, we, you know, I could, I could, you know, we're going to, you want to walk down to the store and get a pop if you can't afford it here? And, you know, she's sitting there, she's sitting there talking and stuff, like, and, you know, I got my arm over the chair right here, like, trying to get her to come, come sit down and talk to me and stuff. And so she gets up, <clears throat> she starts walking, they come and they call me, they're like, they're like, Jamil, is Jamil out here? I'm like, yeah, right here. So they bring me into this room, they had a, they had a nurse so damn fine. She, she she had an ass on her boy with blonde hair, and so I go, I go and I sit down inside the chair, and she's sitting there. And I'm like I'm like, you know I'm just talking to her. I'm just I'm just I'm just going going going. I got her in there, laughing and stuff like that. And then they bring in another one with dark hair with black hair that's fine as hell. But oh my god, she was fine. And and so she comes in and she she's in, she's there, and she's wearing a black uniform, and the other one was wearing a white uniform. And so I, I mean no no the, other, the blonde hair one was wearing a blue uniform. And the one with the girl with the black hair was wearing a black uniform. And I'm just asking, I'm just asking both of them, like, why are the uniforms different colors and stuff? I'm just keeping it going. And they're both working for the program. And so they're looking at me, like, who is this guy? Like, why is he so happy? How can you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't know what's going on. And, and so I, I like them to think what they want. Then they take me into this other room and send me down. And I gotta I gotta wait to see them to tell them what I what I wanna do, what I, like what I'm there for. And and so I just told them, like, yeah. I want, I want to get have like a, um, one of those tests, like one of those STD tests stuff. Like I, I gotta have proof on paperwork. That there's, that there's nothing wrong with me and stuff. And so, as I'm as I'm sitting there and I'm waiting in the room, they send a girl in, and you know she's not really that attractive, but she, she had ass on her though. And I could tell by the way she was walking, she was there for, with the program. And so I got her in the we were in the room together. And I'm sitting there just talking to her. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm talking to her. And eventually, I asked her. I was like, yeah. So you got a boyfriend? She said, I'm married. And you can tell she's working for the program. She's sitting there like super nervous and stuff, like texting, like her eyes are like da 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 da. da. Like her husband's probably telling her what to say. And I, I just told her, I said, yeah, you know, I said, I said, you know, I said, you know, I'm famous. I did a bunch of interviews in Hollywood and got set up to be killed. And I beat that and got put into the program, gang stalking program, organized intimidation is worldwide. And I beat that and I'm laying out courses for other people, and I'm at the best level. They use you know sexy uh, females. Fat asses and all this stuff. I just told I just tell her, I'm just sitting there telling her this straight up. I'm, the way I feel, I'll say whatever the hell I want to say. All the stuff I've been through and everything I've done, I don't care what anybody thinks about me anymore. If I if I feel it and I think it, you know, I'm gonna say it. I'm out here helping people, saving lives. Like you know, as long as I'm not hurting nobody, I'll do it. You know, I'll say what I want to say. And so I'm sitting there talking. I'm sitting there talking to her, and you can tell she's nervous as hell. You can tell the program had her in there. And so eventually I leave. And then they had they had another nurse, come, they had another nurse. Okay, so I go into, well, I go into a room, and they come in there. They come in there, and they're like they're like, okay, well, if you want to get tested, we're gonna have to stick this thing in your penis. And it's, it's the woman working there. She she was fine as hell too. 
And then before they do that, they had a man come inside the room, and the man had some damn gloves on, some plastic gloves on. And I'm just like, what's his role? <laughs> you know what I mean? What's his role? And he's, he's sitting there, and she's like, he's just going to walk, like, he's going to watch my, you know, he, so he's going to look at my penis? Is that what you're saying? And she's like, he's just going to stand here and make sure nothing happens. I'm like, oh, okay. And so she's like, pull on your pants. And I, and I pull my pants down, and she does that thing, you know, that cop's or whatever. And I'm like, after after she, I'm like, I'm just asking because you know this this you know this is how pornos get started and stuff. You know, I'm sitting there looking at her, and she's like, <laughs> she's, she starts laughing. She's like, not today, not today. And so she goes about her business. Then the other nurse came in. And the other nurse was like, you can't be saying stuff like that, blah blah blah. And I'm thinking she's talking about me and the me me her the woman who, with the porn and I'm like, what are you talking about? I can't say stuff like that. She stuck that thing in my penis, I can say what the hell I want to say, you know? And, and she was like, she was like, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about when you were in the waiting room. And and so the nurse hurried up and said that and walked away. And I'm like, oh, hell no, the program's trying to use, use that lopsided fat bitch to throw me off my game. And so she come, she comes back, so she come, they come back in. And um, I so they come back in. And, and so I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, how, how, what gives you the right to, to challenge me on a conversation that you know nothing about? You weren't there. And she's like, I'm like, for all you know, that woman could be a pathological liar. And the nurse was like, you're right, sir. You're right. She probably is a pathological liar. And I'm like, what did she say? I want to make sure my name wasn't slander. Damn it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, in the, I'm getting ready. To, they don't know about me, all the legal stuff I, st I study. When I did my conspiracy research, I studied legal stuff for years and years and years and years. So I'm getting ready to light her ass up like I'm Johnny Cocker and I'm coming, you know, I'm, I'm ready to take him back. And so she's like, nurse is like, you're right, sir. I had no right to say that, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, damn, the program's that weak? I'm like, God damn. What? That's how weak the program is. And that reminded me of another scenario. A few days ago, I was outside and I was walking around and usually there's another woman. She, she has blonde hair and she's short. She has a, boy, she has a fat bubble ass. So her, boy, I love looking at her ass. And I, I saw her, usually her, 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 the, her the other homie, I just call him the other, I just call him, that's the homie, and that's the other homie, <laughs> and so I don't, you know, and so usually he's out, usually, he, every now and then I'll see him outside, and I'm coming around the little circles in my backyard walking, and I caught him doing, doing hand, like hand voodoo or something to the, to the gang stalker cars, like basically letting them know I'm, I'm coming out of my walk, I'm coming out of my walk, and so they, they gotta get active and drive down the street. Like that's supposed to break me or something, and so at that point, I realized I saw that, and that showed me how weak the program was. But the only reason I saw that is because I wasn't looking for him; I was looking for that ass. And because I was excited and motivated about looking for that ass, I was able to see him doing that, and I pierced through the program metaphysically. See what I'm saying? And so that's when you actually beat the program. Then you're able to pierce through the program whenever you want to. And so, because, because of that ass out there, see, people don't know, when I look at that ass, that ass is saving lives. I'm able to go back and help people and save people's lives because I'm motivated off that ass. And so that ass is the key to beating the program. If I don't look at that ass, I want to look at that ass at least once a day. And so, but I was able to see him do that. And I said, okay, well, you know, that, that's the other homie, you know. And so, I turned around, so, so then when I'm at the hospital, when I, when I pierced through that, I said, damn, I just pierced through two scenarios in, in, in one day. I mean, in one week. Then, when I'm coming out of the hospital, they had two hearses out there with, with the lights on. And the reason why they had the hearses was because I had went to a funeral before that. And the funeral I had went to, the guy had actually been gang stalking me lightly. He had, he had been using his headlights and stuff like that. And, and, um, and so... And he had been driving his headlights and stuff. And so, and then he, he died, he died a crazy way. He ended up going crazy. He lost his, he was on the porch at three in the morning, uh, calling his niece, telling her, bitch, where are you at? He was naked. He, they caught him naked on the porch at three a.m., telling his niece to come over there. You know, his niece is a grown woman, but still though. And then, and then he went, then he ended up dying. And then he ended up dying. And at his funeral, they had the lights on the hearse. And so I was talking to my friend Steve on the phone. Well, well, we, you know, I, I talked to him periodically about the program, and I was telling him they had the lights on the hearse. I was telling him that's paranormal stuff. They should have brought the hearse out more. And the program heard me saying that, so the program had the hearse at the hospital. 
that's what you that's what you call pimping the program. See, the level I'm at, we we level I'm at, we don't just beat the program, now we pimp the program. I can find I can pick a female if I want to see more of her, I know what to say. I can say certain stuff on the phone. I can do certain stuff. I can look at her in a certain way. And the program will use her more. But when I do that, she's going to benefit. She's going to be making money out of it. I'm putting food on the table for her and the family. Her sexiness and the ass that she got is helping me to go out and motivate me to help other people beat the program. It's a worldwide thing. So I look at it like me and her are a team. The ass that she got, we're a team. And so, you know, the ass is, is saving the world. Saving the children. You know, <laughs> for real. And so that's what you call pimping the program. And so after you beat the program, after you beat the program, you got to be able to pimp the program. You, you see what I'm talking about? You got <laughs> you to be able to pimp the program. You got to be able to go out there and, 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 and put that ass on the blade. You know, the blade, they call it, they call it uh, the track, the, the holster on the track, where the hose walk down the blade. You got to get out there like I do, be walking on the blade. I mean, walk around, just, 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 just looking at all the ass, looking at all the ass and pimping the program. That's what we do all day now. <laughs>